Ralph Lauren is one of the fashion world's most well-known and well-received names, getting his start in 1967 at a tie manufacturer. Born Ralph Lifshitz in 1939, Lauren was raised in a Brooklyn household to Polish parents, one being an artist and the other a house painter. While attending DeWitt High School, Ralph and his brother would change their last names to Lauren before he would graduate in 1957. While attending high school, Lauren would spend his evenings working for a New York department store chain named Alexander's. He had an early start in fashion around this time as he would use old fabrics to make and upsell ties to his classmates. Using his impressive salesman skills, he then attended business school for only two years before he would drop out. To pursue a career, he saw much more, the world of fashion design. Lauren spent two years in the U.S. Army before he left to pursue a career in sales, working first at Brooks Brothers and then Thai company Rivets of Boston. By the time he was 28 years old, Ralph was working for Thai manufacturer Bo Bramell, where he was able to convince the company president to allow him to invest in his own line of products. Lauren now had a company. The name Polo comes from Lauren's love of sports, namely the aristocratically oriented ones. Aristocracy became a central point of Lauren's fashionistic tastes, actually, as he found the old age, patrician nature of royalty to be visually appealing. He was bothered by the state of men's fashion in the latter 1960s, which, as I've discussed on this channel before, took a very minimalistic and casual direction. The wide and imposing dress suits of yesteryear were out the window, as the businessmen on New York's Madison Avenue swiftly popularized the small lapel three-button suits of the era, with their aggressive entrepreneurial and professional nature. Lauren disliked these suits so much, however, that for his own personal clothing, he would actually design each piece and have manufacturers custom make them for him. He had no idea that it could actually become a profitable business model. Now equipped with a name and company, Lauren set out to find himself an office space where he could design and make each piece. In 1967, the designer began working out of a small drawer in an Empire State Building office. His early works took clear inspiration from the higher class elements of old Hollywood and he swiftly began making deliveries to retail stores willing to sell his product to themselves. A combination of expensive fabrics and gorgeous designs allowed Lauren's new brand to rack up over half a million dollars before the year's end. With his newfound success, he began to reinvest in his brand, adding on men's dress shirts and suits shortly afterwards. And in 1968, the Polo Ralph Lauren brand was officially launched. His designs were unique for the time period. He had an upper-class style that took noticeable inspiration from that of the French and English. Lauren, in regards to his new brand, stated at the time, quote, Think about the type of people who play polo. Wealthy, cosmopolitan, chic. I wanted to create a concept for the name. Then, a barrier was broken in early 1970. The acclaimed Manhattan department store Bloomingdale's fell in love with the polo brand and offered him a distinct space to sell his products in their store. It was the first time the department chain ever offered a single designer a full boutique, and it was a major breakthrough for the clothing company. In order to make sure everything was to his liking, Lauren oversaw every little detail, and it instantly became a hit amongst customers. By 1971, Polo saw its first official store open up on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills was an elegant store with a classic Californian architectural style reminiscent of the exotic nature of colonial Spain. The store attracted a wide consumer base of people looking for elegant and sophisticated pieces, and as a result, Lauren began to diversify his lineup further, debuting his very first woman's clothing line. The lineup was of women's tailored shirts, taking inspiration from his men's pieces. This is also the first time we see the now iconic Polo logo embroidered on the cuffs of these new products. And then, a year later, the iconic Polo shirt, a short sleeve cotton mesh shirt with a noticeable dress collar and embroidered logo on the chest is released to the public and becomes a major sensation. That very same year, the company would release its first full woman's lineup 
to the appreciation of many of the company's fans. The collection brought together the best of the menswear with a distinctly feminine nature, in a very chic way, and people loved it. Another breakthrough would happen in 1974, when Polo would design the male onset wear for The Great Gatsby. With the film being set in the 1920s, this of course made sense, as Lauren's whole theme was old age aristocracy. Each suit in the film seems carefully set up to give off a look of affluence and power, with three-piece suits being the common norm across the movie. In 1977, the designer's clothes would make another major movie showing, with Diane Keaton and Annie Hall. In 1976, the designer's work would pay off, with him winning the Cody Award in women's wear, and the Cody Hall of Fame Award for menswear. He celebrated at the event lavishly, outfitted with a wide-peaked lapel suit and a 1970s-style long black bow tie. As the 1980s and 1990s rolled onwards, the company witnessed a cycle of new lineups, new products, and major advancements in their organization. Officially going public in 1997, more stores opened across the US and 1981 in England. Five years later, Polo opened its first flagship store, amongst New York's elite on Madison Avenue. By the end of the century, Polo had become one of the US's largest fashion brands, and Lauren one of the world's most successful designers. We now arrive at today with Polo Ralph Lauren as we know it, one of the most eccentric, modernistic, and attention-catching clothing names. The world of fashion will forever witness the impact of the famed designer's many works over the past five and a half decades. What we wear in the modern day wouldn't be the same without him.